Okay. Okay. So uh, thank you everyone for your patience. It's it happens with Zoom and other things like that. So it's it's my pleasure today to host uh, Professor Juan Antonio Senan de Frutos as a speaker in our series about tyranny in the 16th century. And Professor Senan is a is professor of the Loyola University in Seville. Uh, he's working in the field of the philosophy of law and political philosophy, primarily interested in the early modern period and the Jesuit thought in particular. He's an author, among other things, of a monograph on Francisco Suarez, Jesuits and the Complexity of Modernity, published by Brill in 2019. And today, Professor Sanan de Frutos will talk about the School of Salamanca, the title of the of the lecture is Political Community, Common Good and Tyranny in the School of Salamanca. So, Professor Senant, the floor is, is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Mateus. And thank you to Alan Mikivis University. And hello to our colleagues, uh, our friends, like Roberts, uh, Michael, and Pablo, Pablo Font. <laughs> uh, well. Um, a political community, common good, and tyranny in the school of Salamanca. Uh, introduction. School of Salamanca or Iberian School of Peace. In order to study the, the treatment of the tyranny in the school of Salamanca in the 16th century, I consider it necessary to approach this school in a broader way that is including its doctrinal expansion to Spain, Portugal, and territory of the New World, in what has been recognized in recent years by different authors such as Pedro Calafate or Bartolomeu Melia as the Iberian School of Peace. Thus, is dif in different authors belonging to different religious orders such as the Dominican or Jesuit, we can find, we can find uh, common values in treating of the juridical, political, social, or religious problems in the face of the diverse challenges presented in the 70, in the 16th century. This will offer us, as we shall see, a broader vision of the problem of tyranny in this context. Also, uh, as an in introduction, I will point out some historical and doctrinal assumptions that give us relevant clues to understand the question of tyranny in this auto. First, in light of the medieval theological tradition of Aristotelian philosophy, political power is linked to care for the common good. This is a decisive aspect that endows it, in it with an eternal constitutional function. That is, power is an institutional instrument for the care of the of the community for the common good. Only in this way can both political relationship and the normative burden, as well as the institutional function attribute to the power, be understood in conceptual terms. Secondly, that to speak of tyranny presupposed in life of the medieval political institution of the kingdoms of Spain that the political community is the original subject of constituted political power, and that, in turn, uh, it is the primary source of the law that sustains the legitimacy or the legality, uh, legality of power. Therefore, power is not understood uni unilaterally uh, from the top down, but rather power is constructed for the bottom up as a generation for the community. Thirdly, that is concept original juridical, political, and linked to the expression of the maximum negativity of power in relationship uh, with this uh, subject. is not only used as a constitutional political concept, but is a concept that denotes an intense sense of injustice exercised by different forms of power and that is projected onto different spheres of social 
relations. That is, uh, it is not only a concept that is used to use uh, the situation or parsi of the roller, but it's seen as a concept that also applies to other relationships where power is exercised abusively, including in his relationship with other people or in religious interaction themselves. This implies a normative reconfig reconfiguration of the relation of the empire between people, which does not legitimize the political tyranny of one people over another. This is a recognition, not only factual, but also normative, of the existence of a universal community of a suprastate nature, which implies that the actor themselves assume moral rules superior that the sovereignty to the sovereignty of the states. The basis of these moral rules is the dignity of human person, the unity of human race, the common good of the human race, and the natural equality of the sovereignty of the world. Thus, the concept of the community was not merely international, but properly universal, because civil power did not lie in a faith but in natural reason and in the communication and sociability of mankind. In the rare sense, and in particular since the Christian humanism uh, of com or cosmopolitan science that operates in this tradition of the Kuro Salamanca or Vera Kuro space, and thus for authors as Francisco de Vitoria, Bartolomé de las Casas, or other Jesuit authors, there is an expansion of the scope of humanity, where the authentic humanity of the new people uh, with whom we interact in different parts of the world is defended despite suspicions of incivility, barbarism, or religious difference. The common good which defend the just or le legitimate good that can be uh, participate in an enjoyed by each member of a political communi community is not limited to each society, but is connected to an ethically riches that the, the good of all those who make up humanity. The school of Salamanca is historically uh, situated in the Renaissance, both a crossroad of tradition and words, as well as in a renewal of tradition. On the one hand, the school of Salamanca can be understood in the uh, 16th century as set in relation to the theological and social culture, uh, culture of the Middle Age. On the other hand, on the other hand uh, there is a process of uh, renewal of scholasticism in which it is open both to medieval tradition, uh, traditions or principally to the thoughts of the Saint Thomas Aquinas or the current uh, of European humanists that are already operating in these authors as well. Scholastic re uh, renewal was decisively driven by the Dominican uh, Francisco de Vitoria, recognized as the master and spirit of the school of Salamanca, which in turn was projected both in, in Spain, Portugal, and, and the New World, thus forming the so called Iberian School of Peace. In this scholastic renewal, there are an extension of theological consideration to the ethical social question of the time, such as defense of the freedom and right of the human person or the right of the to freedom of the people, or the study of the normative applicable to the, rel to the relations between peoples. Another very important historiographical question for understanding the differential significance of the contribution of the Kuro Salamanca is to consider it in the light of the different with, their, with respect to other developments or the modernity in Europe from the 16th century onwards. Political modernity in Europe is usually understood with the, with the definition of the, things, uh, the state uh, so sovereignty that is constituted as the proper and differentiated locus of power and legality. In the school of Salamanca, we can find another vision in which we cannot properly or technically piece 
speak of sovereignty in the matter of body or Machiavelli in the sense of a power that is definitely beyond all limits, even if, for example, in Machiavelli, it has to keep certain appearance of containment, but in itself and internally, it has no power or instance that conceptually limits it. Body also understood sovereignty as non-restriction or non-suggestion by another power or authority. In contrast, in contrast to this idea of power or and sovereignty that developed at the beginning of the modernity in Europe, <coughs> in Europe, this could um, we find another view of the on this. First leap, power has an original and inseparable ring link to the people, and secondly, it, ha it has internal constitutional limits. In this content, uh, I will deal with some question about Francisco de Victoria, then I will also say something to continue with Bartolomé de las Casas. <coughs> and point out something about Juan de Mariana, who, together with the opposition to tyranny as a constitutional perversion of the constituted power, also shares with the previous ones a certain critical conscience about the conquest of America. This will allow us to understand in what sense for these authors as a critical conscience of the conquest, and in contrast, in contrast to, to other Spanish authors as, as Lopez de Gomara, who have a, a geographic vision of the Spanish conquest, the author of this school uphold a non tyrannical idea of empire. In doing so, they promoted their own missionary practice by establishing, especially in Jesuit, reduction, uh, reductions and missions with Indias at a pay free of the encomienda and spare uh, personal service of the Indians, which constitute an anti-colonial space in the political or social con context of the colony. San medieval doctrinal antecedents, Thomas Aquinas. As a legitimate reaction to, to tyranny, Aquinas in his speculum, the regimine principum, renounced to uphold the lawfulness of tyrannicide. Removal of the tyrant, the tyrant cannot be left to private initiative, but must be achieved according to law and justice. In other words, no illegal procedure is admissible in relation to the king, but the community has the power to restrain him or if the, if the situation requires it to depose him. Francisco de Vitoria and Tyranny. The Dominican master continues the thought of uh, Thomas Aquinas, a, a, a tradition on which he relies to face this civic problem of tyranny, although, as we shall see, he also advanced in the configuration of a right of self-defense of the community, or also in the projection of tyranny to other dimensions as as the exercise of the power to judge, for as he points out, judges must abstain from breaking the procedural order because although they are lower to be severed, never, nevertheless they must not fall into cruelty which is tyranny and your inhumanity. But especially tyranny also arises in the relationship with another people. And this is in a double sense, as a criterion to uh, le legitimize the intervention to avoid the harm or sacrifice of, innoc of, of innocence by a tyrannical regime, and the other hand, to delegit de delegitimize the despotings of tyranny of a ruler who pretends to exercise the right to war use at bellum, without just cause and without promoting neither the good of the people nor the good of humanity. 
Thus, uh, Francisco Victoria indicates the rather mass did both war and peace toward the common good of the political community and uh, must not divert public good toward his own particular glory and profit, much less must he put his citizens in dangers. In this concept, the, the difference between the legitimate king and the tyrant, and the tyrant in that the tyrant focuses the government toward his own benefit and profit, while the legitimate king directs it toward to, to, towards the public good, as Aristotle teaches. The contribution of this author, they call as Salamanca, develops in a change or era where they defend, so to speak, a geopolit or geopolitics of friendships between people and therefore the projection of an ethical conscience in the face of globality as well as the, particip as the particip participation of each society in a greater whole that embranks all of humanity. As Francisco de Vitoria already pointed out, although there does not exist as such a, a universal republic, the community of humanity as a whole, to do service, participates in some way in a political co uh, coexistence and authority. The whole world the whole of humanity, which in a certain way forms a republic, he said, has uh, the power to give just laws uh, that are convenient to all, uh, such as uh, those uh, of the love of peoples. Then the idea of a world political community of which the relief of each country should feel themselves representative Suppose that one can intervene in another state in the name of the universal human community, when an innocent people is being, is being tyrannized by its ruler um, and suffer grave injustice that lead to the death of innocent people. Victoria states in his Relectio de Indies the case of San Abreas of America where there are sacrifices uh, or innocence, or where human beings are killed and then eaten. In his Relectio de Jure Belli, he states the above as a general criterion. Rales, by the, by the law of people and by the authority of all mankind, uh, have authority not only over the sages, but also over foreigners to compel them not to cause harm. Moreover, it seems that they have that authority by natural right, for otherwise the, the, the human race could not succeed uh, if Sun did not have power and authority to dissuade the wicked for causing harm to the innocent. Indeed, uh, what is necessary to, for the government and preservation of the universal community is of natural right. There is, is no other reason to prove that the political community has by natural right authority to impose penalty and punishment on its own citizens when they are pernicious to the people. And if the state can do this with its citizens, there is then no doubt that so can the world community do it with any wicked man. The starting point to show the anti-juridical, anti-political nature of tyranny is the very uh, nature of the constitution of society. For Victoria, sharing the Aristotelian Thomistic uh, tradition, human base is above all a social animal, type of human that responds more adequately to human needs is a political association. Political society, then, is the most natural community and the one uh, that can provide for the good of the human being. 
It is not therefore a merely human invasion, but a product of, a, of man's own nature, necessary for his survival and security. On the other hand, since a political society can be coercive only if it ordered by a governing power. Thus, the end of civil power is the same as that uh, of the community that is to provide for its good. Victoria warns that by natural and divine right, the civil power is not found in each for of the members, but in the community. That is to say that the power to govern belongs to the republic or political community itself as such, because men being equal, there is no reason why this power should be held by one more good than by another. However, since it cannot be exercised by a multitude, it becomes necessary to entrust this power to a prince or to a ruler who personif uh, personifies the, the community itself. Public powers, which emanate uh, directly from the organized political community, once it is transferred to the monarch, it is, is constituted as a superior to the republic itself and therefore can consolidate and govern in a stable way. The king's superiority, superiority with respect to the republic or community cannot be understood, however, as a privilege. The king is obliged to abide by the established law, though only with respect to his big directiva and no respect to his base coactiva. Likewise, the the king has the authority to legislate only as a public person. Therefore, laws must be given for the common good and not for the private good of the ruler or a, or a few privileged persons. Uh, the laws, as far as they are convenient to the political community, are obligatory, even if they are approved by a tyrant, by not because they are approved by a tyrant, by, but by the, the consent of the community. For it is healthier that the laws passed by a tyrant should be observed than that no laws should be observed at all. Uh, it will certainly be open destruction on the political community, the primes who had not just title to take possession of the kingdom, for there would be no court and in no way could wrongdoers be punished, since a tyrant is not legitimate just in his law and not binding. On the other hand, even if political community could not claim the power perpetually granted, by into the king with comfort and used to titulus, his successor, either by uh, the, of uh, her her hereditary succession or by election, uh, one could always lawfully depose the tyrant, as would be the case by the tyranny, by the exercise or more of government. Indeed, even if the political community has given its authority to the king, it is it still has their natural and inalienable right to deserve his self. Victoria from various angles depends and um, organizes the right of self-defense as an inalienable right. Already in his Relectio Domicidio, he is considered the duty of self-preservation and self-defense of each person and the way in which this soul, this should be exercised correctly. Regarding suicide, he expresses the normative burden that one's own life has for each person. 
is maintained that suicide is not only harmful to the community to which the subject belongs, since the person is a part of community, but it is also a sin against the charity that every person owes to himself, since person has no del no has no less obligation to love himself than to love his neighbor. This that the to oneself implies a correspondent right to defend one's own life. Thus, a person could uh, kill to defend himself by exercising an authority that came to him from God by natural law. This is connected with, with the right of self-defense to the community. Victoria will train in his lesson de lejibus, discussing whether it's explicit or not to change the government. He has affirmed that there is only one case in which he is truly advisable, that is, when the, can, the king uh, governs as a tyrant. The king were a tyrant as to the move of government the Republica could depose him, for even if the Republica has uh, renounced its authority, it still has the natural right to defend itself. In such case, the political community can depose him. Indeed, if he granted him this authority, it nevertheless retains also the natural to defend itself. If the king were a tyrant in government, even if the Republica has renounced its authority, it retains the natural right to defend itself, and it cannot do otherwise, it can reject the king, he said. Victoria uh, again upheld this right shortly thereafter in the Relectio Potestate Papa et Concilii. In this sense, he determined that since it seems explicit to reject force with force, any person had the right to resist injustice. Uh, from this, he did us. Not only is it listen not to obey unjust order, but one can oppose them, if necessary, also with force and arms. Also, although uh, always paying attention to remain within the limits of a moderate self-defense, minimizing the use of violence. Victoria will return to the argument uh, uh, Victoria, uh, sorry, will return to the argument in his Relectio de Indis. Here, in discussion when this is more or less listed to declare war, this is very clearly uh, uh, between the right to self-defense of the individual and the right to self-defense to to self of the right community. Indeed, the individual uh, had the right to defend himself and his sins, but he had no right to take revenge for injustice. Defense can't uh, develop only as long as the danger lasts. Victoria affirmed Moreover, that the political community has authority not only to defend itself, but also to demand justice, to demand reparation to the of offenses suffered. But the Republic has the authority not only, not only to defend itself, but also to claim for itself and for its own and to pursue it and justice. Although, in turn, this right to claim and pursue the justice received in no merit astral right, is the exercise is limited by negative consequence that exercise this right may entail. Victoria put the case for a reflection. If it would be good to rise up in war to defend the people against a tyrant, legitimate defense of a people that is suffering harm, if we know that uh, of the 12,000 persons that sit, 80,000 are going to die. In this case, say Vittoria, uh, it would be preferable to tolerate the tyrant than 
than that so many persons should perish. This right arises for the requirement of the political community itself to be self-sufficient. Indeed, it could not preserve the bon commune if it could not avenge injustice suffered and está in style respect in its enemies. This, however, requires, as we have seen, weighing the consequence of the action. In this context, uh, uh, we can turn to Victoria treatment or tyrannicide. In discussing whether uh, or not it is what leads to kill the tyrant of Thomas uh, or Aquinas Summa Theologica, uh, Victoria returns to this natural and inalienable right to defend oneself and the republic or community, or political community itself. Taking out the difficulty already raised when commenting Aquinas, Victoria wondered whether it was solicited for a private citizen without any authorization for the community to kill the despot. Indeed, no one can kill with private authority another, even if he has a wrongdoer. Now, if he is listed to reject force with force within a moderate proportionate self-defense, with greater reason it is listed to kill one to, uh, who attacks the political community. Victoria appeals to the Republic, to the uh, pardon, to the Council of Contents, which in fourteen fifteen condemned. Uh, as heretical the thesis according to which any tyrant can and should listen uh, be killed by any vassal or uh, despite any oath he may be uh, have taken and without waiting for the sentence or mandate of the judge for he uh, raises the action of the private of the private citizen and without due process to kill the tyrant. Uh, Victoria implicitly refers to the well-known distinction of the Bartolo Sasso Ferrato uh, between tyranny as arbitrary conquest of power and tyranny as arbitrary exercise of power, affirming that one can be subtly tyrannical, tyrannical in two ways. There is no there is one who pretends to be a king and is not, so that he has no right over the lands he occupies, he occupies but tyrannical occupies them. This republic is not his, and he takes it. Uh, there is another who is the rightful owner of his republic and kingdom, but rules and administers them tyrannically for the benefit of himself on his own, and not for the benefit of the political community itself, but for the destruction. And for this distinction, he deduced two conclusions. The first, he affirmed that it's not licit to a, a, for a private person to kill the ruler who, having the right arbitrarily exercise power in a tyrannical manner, as it say, of the kill or the king of Castile. Pedro the first a cruel, because it is again natural law for a man to be condemned without any process. Moreover, Victoria points out it is always again natural law for someone to be at the same time actor, judge, and executor of the sentences. Note that note also that it implicitly contains the less the, the, the legitimation of conquest of those who take lands that are not theirs, since they already have the dominion of, to, of other society of people. Thus, violent conquest or conquest based, based on the disposition of the dominion of people is not a just title, but a tyrannical act. Therefore, in his case, the princess the Spaniards or, the, or, or, or others cannot be justified by 
alleged right of conquest, which does not, no, not exist as such for Victoria. This uh, allows us to give another uh, fundamental uh, um, author in this school, Bartolomé de las Casas. Bartolomé de las Casas, uh, born in Seville, he arrived in America as an encomendero at the beginning of the 16th century, after studying law at the University of Salamanca. Encomienda was a medieval institution where the king assigned a concession to a beneficiary, encomendero, to institution where uh, to, uh, pardon, to, to, to collect uh, to, and enjoy tribute uh, for the for his Indians in money, in especie, post, textile, etc., or in wars, building house, cultivating the land, or any service, or any other service. In exchange, he must protect and protect, in this case, the Indians entrusted to him. Uh, and instructed in the Catholic uh, religion, but himself or through a lay or ecclesiastical person, doctrinero, that he will maintain. He, Bartolomé de las Casas, renounced uh, soon uh, to the encomienda and later joined uh, to uh, the order of uh, San. Uh, Dominic. Las Casas continued the initial criticisms uh, before the Spaniards in the new world of another Dominican friar, Antonio de Montesino, who in the Advent Sermons of uh, 1511 in Santo Domingo pronounced his known as the cry of Montesinos. He said, this boy uh, tells you that you are all immortal sin and indeed your life and die for the cruelty and tyranny that you use with this innocent, innocent people. Tell me by what right and by what justice do you hold these Indians in such cruel and horrible servitude? By what authority have you waged such detestable wars against these people uh, who were in the meek and peaceful lands? These are they no men? Do they not have rational souls? Are you not obligated to love them as yourself? Do you not understand this? Do you not feel this? Are you in such retardy death or sleep. In, the same, in this same attitude, Las Casas was a terrible critic of the abuse of the Spanish presence in the New World, and he denounced the uh, legitimation of the conquest a uh, uh, something tyrannical, tyrannical in reality. If this served to justify violence against the Indians, the reputation and plundering of their goods. They lost uh, the freedom and the imposition by force of a way of life by the conquerors uh, or forced uh, conversion to the Christian religion which did violence not only to the Indians but also to the Christian uh, religion itself. Conquest in the previous sense cannot be legitimized in America because the people who live they share the same humanity as the Spaniards and therefore the same capacity or possibility for civic development or political coexistence. With an approach of, sensit of sensitiv sensitivity, which today could be called intercultural. He defends this starting equality, also relying on classical authority such as Cicero and on the Christian theological tradition itself. The recognition of human 
of common humanity also in relation with the people of the, of the new world implies that they should not be subjected to violence and cruelty. Thus, for Las Casas, the conquest of the new world is tyrannical and he stays in his work Memorial de Remedios. He said, this term or name conquest for all the lands and kingdom of the enemy discovered and to be discovered is a tyrannical, maomedic, abusive, improper, and infernal term and word. For in all the Indies there is to be no conquest against the moral of Africa, the Moors of Africa, or Turks, or heretics who possess our lands, persecute Christian and wars to this and work to destroy our holy faith by but the preaching of the golpe of cry for which is not necessary to conquer with arms or with arms but the persuasion of sweet and divine war and the sample of and words of holy life it is not to be called a conquest but preaching the first and conversion and conversion and service and salvation of those infidels who are ready without delay to receive Jesus Christ as the universal creator and his majesty as Catholic uh, and blessed King. And this is the proper and Christian name of the matter of the Indies. The, this critique of the conquest uh, tyranny is trying to reconfigure the uh, to uh, re reconfigure the presence and political dominion of the Spanish monarchy in the new world. As in the consent of the people who want to become vassal for the of the monarchy, which must ensure that uh, religious presence is peaceful and avoid all forms of protection in any social or economic interaction. The good of the pioneer, in order to be authentically such, must be, pro be promote, promoted also while also caring for, uh, for and respecting the good of others. Las Casas have been considered as a promise of the black legends against Spain. However, his radical criticism of the count is not only intended to denounce the tyranny in the new world, but also to give, to guide uh, the political, social, and religious presence so that so it would be adjust to reason and justice and to the golpes, to the gospel instead. Therefore, the intervention and juridical memorials before the court of the emperor tried to configure another way of relationship and presence in the new world. But in turn, the Casas point out in the previous day the criticism of tyranny also takes one a, a specific meaning as a perversion of the freedom or Christian, or Christian preaching. Thus, the very essence of the, Christi uh, the Christian religion is perverted by this violence. The reference to the concept of tyranny was familiar in the formation of Las Casas, since St. Thomas Quinas has des described it as a power alien to reason oppressive as society without any legality. In the 14th century, Bartolo Sasso Ferrato has denounced de, uh, uh, that uh, because of tyranny, uh, the behavior of several in roles has infiltrated our social attitude, warning juries of the need to correct this phenomenon that spreads like corruption itself in Italy, whether in the rulers or in the peoples themselves. Las Casas observe this, the, this same degraded spirit in the Indian society and denounce it as a jurist in the court of the emperor 
through his report brevísima relación de la destrucción de las Indias. Conquerors, commanders, and royal officials were effectively accused eh, of tyranny as those who were altering the reason of the Indian government and the responsibility in the cave of the society that the crown had given them. La casa uh, reflects in his work how the official representative of the monarchy in the Indies, blinded by ambition, lost all human reason and degraded themselves into a condition of speciality. With the rhetorical image of the aggressive wolf and opposed to the candor and innocence of, of the land reflected by the Indies. Tyranny was contrary to the common good of the human race and to which all uh, were obliged by divine and natural law but through the killing violence or irrational slavery, they were transgressing the divine law and the natural right to life and liberty. But together with these laws, as Casas also accused the non-compliance with the rules of positive law that should govern the Indian society, strengthening with the political bulls of a, a canonical nature. The vast of the new world of the Indies, granted and entrusted by God and by church to the kings of Castile, so that they could govern and govern, convert and prosper them temporally and spiritually, as well as the roles of civil law and the roles of positive law that should govern the Indian society. Saying a place to the role of civil law emanating from the crown, for the crown, such as the laws of the Burgos or the ordinance of Granada, which denied the legitimacy of the violent entries of the to the of the conquest, to the fraud in the liberty of the benefits to the crown from the gold business and to the same rebellion that occurred among the Spaniards seeking their own the benefit, which he also calls tyrannies. His proposal for the crown was that the juridical order of the Indies should depend on the validity and force of positive law. Of a legal norm that came from the emperor and that had the force of invariable constitution, determination, and royal law that neither now nor any time ever perpetually can be taken, can be taken or alienated for the said royal crown. Among the, the remedies, Las Casas say, all those people of the whole of that or are free. With freedom, they no lose by admitting and having the king as their universal lord. Therefore, he also called uh, for the abolition of the slavery and the provision of the new incursions on conquest expedition, the origin of all the evils that had afflicted the new world. Uh, the Jesuit uh, Juan de Mariana and Tyranny. I will now, in this context, make some consideration about uh, the three men of tyranny in this Jesuit thinker who has generated a wide historical and doctrinal polemic. The question that can serve here as a way to explore this author is where he separates himself from the Catholic, from the tradition of Catholic in modernity in the treatment of the tyranny in the school of Salamanca. My basis, my basic answer uh, is that Mariana chased the same historical, historical and doctrin doctrinal presupposi uh, presuppositions of the author discussed above. 
I will address this briefly above all in the question of the tyrant in the abuse uh, practice of a legitimate king of origin. The, bell, the best known writing of Mariana where his addresses the first question of tyranny in his work, the Regis Institutione, published in uh, 1599, but written uh, 10 years before. In Spain, it seemed that the reggae did not arouse any opposition at, this, at the time of its publication, and the world before this date uh, tries to uh, use it for the education of the, of the future Philip III, that inscribed in the tradition of the Speculum Principis. The censor who examined it, the text so no obstacle to his pu publication. However, in France and among the Jesuit, it did generate a reaction. As Sarah Blount also reports, Jesuit in France expresses concern about the reggae as soon as it was published. The first request to suppress the book was daily put forward by the provincial congregation of the Society of Jesuit in France in the very years of its publication. The provincial congregation of Paris and Lyon Dolly repeated their calls for the suppression of, of the treaties immediately after the reggae was republished six years later. At the same time, in Spain, the Jesuit, the true Jesuit, uh, Luis de Molina, in word uh, Justitia Iure, recognized the power of the community to destroy the tyrant in office and on the condition that removal of the monarch has been previously proclaimed, admit the use of the self-defense by a simple private citizen. Other uh, contemporary author of Juan de Mariana, says Juan de Roa Davila, admits resistance against the tyrannical queens, kings in his work uh, De, Renor, De Regnorum Justitia, for whom the form of government has been freely created by the will of the community and this can change role or political regime by reason of iniquity and tyranny of the roles. Juan de Mariana, in his definition of the tyrant, does not de deviate from the ten and characteristics set forth by a series of authors faithful to the legacy of Aristotle and uh, Aquinas. In the Reggae Institutione, he formulates the, the famous question, whether it's listed to kill the tyrant, thus giving it great importance. Uh, she had already stated in chapter three that she did not see any convenience in removing the throne from a tyrannical king, as was done in the Pedro, the case of Pedro the First in Castile. A difference uh, with Victoria. Uh, but uh, to this end, Mariana admits that such a kind can be deposed if their injustice and weakness they put the state in danger, if they despise the national religion and become totally incorrigible. I believe that we must destroy them, uh, as we know, has been done more than once in Spain. When, leaving aside the sentiments of humanity, kings become tyrants, we must, if they, if, if they were while best, there again then uh, our darts. Thus was King Don Pedro publicly destroyed for his cruelty, and his brother Enrique ostained the kingdom. But um, note uh, the character of public action 
not private, a wish, a, with a wish Mariana interpret this historical action. In another passage, uh, Maria interpret another historical action of the position of the tyrannical king, which uh, generate re uh, reaction against it in French. It is about the death of the King Henry III of France, which was, uh, Mariana in the case, a uh, sad and remarkable event, lamentable spectacle that in few cases will be worthy of praise, but in which princes can understand that they are audacious and impious weakness cannot remain unpunished. On the tyrant of usurpation, uh, Mariana quickly states that the, he personally assumes the consensus of the matter, since he said, there is a general agreement of the case. Both philosophers and theologians agree that if a prince took uh, possession of, of the Republic by force of arms, uh, without any right and without the consent of the people, the case of the Turing's office is different in principle. Mariana said, we believe that he is to be suffered, he raised. But as long as he does not despise the laws of duty and honor to which he is subject by reason of his office, which is equivalent to admit resistance against legitimate kings in the case, despite the law and religion of the kingdom and defy even itself with their arrogance and impiety. At first, it is only a matter of dethroning the tyrant, but at the end, one can kill the prince as a public enemy with the authority of the right to of defense. And if assemblies cannot uh, be organized to that decision is collective, any individual can, condition that the tyranny of the king is recognized by a public fame and the opinion of men respected for their wisdom and prudence who held in the salvation of the fatherland. Mariana points out, I can never uh, believe that he has done wrong who seconded the public wishes has sustained in such circumstance against to the life of his, of his princes. As we appoint uh, out above, Mariana, in order to justify the right of resistance of the political community when an assembly cannot be held to make the decision, the decision public, legitimize in her case that there be at least both public things or tyranny or common consideration of the king as a public enemy and public desires to shame the regime and in turn to have the opinion or may, of men uh, respected of their big windows and prudence. In this sense, although it is a radically said theoretical approach, it has uh, elements in common or some, uh, at least uh, some elements in common with other a treatment of tyranny in the school of Salamanca and in the Iberian school of peace in the 16th century. For their part, the, the Jesuit reacted through the general of the Je Society of Jesus, Claudio Aquaviva, who had already been warned since uh, 1599 of the danger of Mariana's position on the part of the French Jesuits. Uh, ten years after, Aquaviva intervened with a decree that forbade any religious or the institute under penalty of the communication to maintain that it was permitted to anyone under the press of tyranny, the of tyranny, 
to kill kings or prisons or to attain again their existence. Uh, in, in August of the same years, uh, the French Jesuits were forbidden to defend uh, Father Mariana. Some conclusion or conclusion remarks. In this tradition, it's not possible to affirm the absolute character of the institute power. Therefore, political power is always understood within a relative autonomy with respect to the people. Once institute, the institution of political modernity, the state, the law, there are, are no autonomous or detached instances by subject to the common good of the people. There is no sacralization of the public state or of the legal instance. Thus, rationality is not absorbed or monopolized by a constituted power. And uh, a social or communitarian point of view is maintained that can just positive normative or the practice of power itself. The popular origins of the power are considered in the life of a successive process of collective self-determination. There is no a historical order where I invested directly by God to be preserved. Thus, his approach do not presuppose a conservative principle, but rather a dynamizing principle of the process of social institutionalism of the political order. The political institution must be respected and preserved as far as possible, since it is a central necessary instrument for human life in society. Tyranny is a relationship contrary to law and, poti and politics, but uh, which is it that in the internal re relationship of each society. That is to say, it is projected in this school uh, to the relation between people of the whole human race. Therefore, this is not a matter only to each uh, society because there are criteria of justice common of the, to the human race. Tyranny as an entry form of gente serves a category to express the maximum degradation in human relation among the members of the human race. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, thank you for, for the lecture. Uh, now we have some time for, for questions or discussion, so you can if you want to say something, you can unmute yourself. Uh, I can see Michal Novakovsky is having a, a question. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, uh, Juan Antonio, for your wonderful uh, lecture. Um, I wondered, and I may have missed something because my, my connection isn't great, but I just wondered whether you could um, say a little bit about uh, any distinctive features of political thought of the school of Salamanca uh, against the general Catholic political thought of Europe uh, at that period. If there are any distinctive features and if they are, uh, what, what are they? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I don't understand your your question, Mika. Um, um so uh was the uh the school of Salamanca in any way uh unique among other Catholic political uh thinkers of that time? Uh, especially regarding to the question of uh, tyranny side, but but also other issues that you think are are important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that uh, this author uh, has in common uh, different values. Um, 
like uh, the origin of, of, of power, uh, the, the limits or the uh, internal constitution of the powers, uh, the need uh, of the procedural ways to depose uh, the political uh, that uh, um, is a tyrant. Mm. But uh, perhaps in the case of uh, Juan de Mariana, is a, is a case, is a special case. Uh, because uh, he um, he has a uh, uh, of view that uh, le le uh, legitimize le the the pose of the children. Um, only by a public fame. In the case that no uh, have no got uh, the sentence of one assembly, but uh, I think uh, that uh, this is uh, a certain uh, certain. Uh, uh, to try uh, the or justificate this position, uh, appealing with the public fame, uh, public wish, uh, um, public sense. Uh, I know that is a very uh, uh, problematic question, <laughs> but. Um, um, uh, perhaps uh, he is uh, a poor um, prudence, <laughs> and then the the other Jesuit, more prudence, uh, like Luis de Molina, uh, said that it's necessary uh, to uh, have got a, a procedural sentence. Uh, and in, in this sense, I think Francisco Suarez uh, has more uh, with uh, Luis de Molina than um, uh, Juan de Mariana. Uh, but uh, another uh, question that I have uh, thought is that the, the intention of Mariana is to uh, edificate the the regnum uh, institutione. Uh, um, he appeals uh, to the um, this uh, uh, historical examples um, because uh, they can. Uh, to move the 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 princess uh, uh, to a better compression of his own roles. No? I think he has um, the persuasion that with this uh, uh, historical case, um, the princess can. Uh, um, to understood who, uh, where is uh, his own limits. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other questions or comments? <clears throat> Pablo, do you say? <laughs> Uh, hello, uh, good afternoon, good evening for everybody. I have some serious technical problems. My computer, not my computer, the, the cable was burning, so I had to, to move from my home to the university. <laughs> I'm sorry to to be here so so late. Um, and I think the, the, this all the questions, because I have read more or less the, 
the paper before the presentation, so more or less I, I know I more I know what I have uh, Professor Senen talk about, and but I, I think the the most interesting point in his presentation in his paper is about the the context of the of the Escuela Iberic School, uh, Salamanca School. Cause, because a uh, lot of papers uh, don't uh, take in, in account, don't, don't see this important context, especially the cultural context in the, the Spanish monarchy in 16th and also 17th century, uh, which was, uh, from my point of view, very, very different from the, for example, um, French or the, or the English Brit Britannic context, especially, um, especially uh, with these uh, ideas about the uh, um, uh, metaphysics uh, conception of the, of the reality also a uh, different anthropologic uh, point of view, which was all uh, obviously in the Catholic tradition, I, I think the scholastic tradition, but the, the application of this uh, tradition to the new situations, to new, um, new scenario, especially the, um, the arrival to, to the new, to wall to, to America's continent. Uh, I think it was a very important renewal of the this uh, tradition, this scholastic tradition, which, which was at this time more or less dying because uh, as Saint Ignatius says, say, um, and there were a lot of repetition of um doctrines and so on but um especially with with vitoria and uh, it was a, a new application to this uh, tradition to uh, to new problems very very uh, very different problems uh, the shock with this new the uh, cultural uh, world, like was America, for example, not only, not only, but I, I think it was the most important. And this, I was saying, and and, and I'm, I'm trying to resume <laughs> this uh, important, um, this important renewal of the uh, scholastic tradition with this. Um, Metaphysic and anthropological vision, which was not the the, the um, hegemonic vision of the modernity in Central Europe, for example, with Descartes, or or the vision, uh, for example, in 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 other in other aspects. Uh, uh, I don't know Machiavell, for example. But especially, I think it, it was very very important the, the impact of this of these uh, different conception of the human being and the society um, in the in the practical philosophy, in the moral philosophy, in the juridical philosophy, in the political philosophy. Mm -hmm. And because of this, uh, I, I think um, these kind of studies are very important because a lot of, not every, not every author, but a lot of authors, and they don't uh, study these these different contexts uh, to 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 reach uh, um, a new uh, uh, a more complete understanding of these of these authors, um, and also the the. For example, the the, the, the mm, concrete context of the, um, the studies, for example, of this uh, uh, theologist, uh, these authors were were usually religious 
for uh, Jesuits, Dominicans, um, Augustinians, Franciscans, and they're, 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 they have they have a, a very important um, uh, background of studies, but also a very concrete spiritual spirituality um, um, ideas or experiences more than ideas that I think uh, usually in the academia we don't uh, we don't see because this um, we have this uh, mainstream of uh, writing papers in a very concrete uh, topic and sometimes it, it, this dynamic doesn't allow us to to understand the, the this the the framework the the complete picture the the context so so uh, congratulations Juan Antonio and thank you very much for your for your paper because the presentation I I I, I would would not be able to <laughs> to listen thank you thank you for that comment thank you. I have a. I also have a uh, question uh, to you, Juan Antonio. You talked about this, the criticism of the Spanish conquest of the Americas by mm -hmm. uh, de las Casas, primarily, but also de Vitoria. Uh, what was the reaction of the secular and ecclesiastical authorities in Spain? What was the reaction towards this criticism? Yeah. I think the the, the most common reaction with the with, was the uh, the agreement uh, with these uh, uh, missionaries and uh, theo uh, theologian theorists. Um, uh, things mm, uh, great authors like uh, Francisco de Vitoria, Domingo de Soto, that was in the school in the Salamanca University. He has um, uh, he has got uh, a great uh, fame, uh, a great uh, authority. And I think the uh, um, implies uh, the, the the configuration of the governance of the empire. They, they are uh, um, in line with the uh, theological uh, principle that. Uh, uh, the tradition and uh, this author has uh, defended. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think we can we can uh, end on this on this note. So I thank you very much for for being here and for your patience at the beginning. We had some technical problems, but uh, but they happen. So I, I'm glad that we we managed to meet. And uh, thank you again, Professor Senant, for your uh, presentation. Uh, and I wish all of you a pleasant evening and, and see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye bye.